Today we're going to take a look at the new THLW200. This is the successor phone to the W100 which we reviewed a few months back and it's actually a different beast altogether. If you remember the THL100 is a nice phone, 4.7 inch screen, quad core at a really great price, about $159 retail. So let's have a look and see how the W200 differs. Comes in the trademarked THL packaging, in other words, nicely done. A really lovely looking phone, to be honest with you. It's sleek, um, thin, five inch screen, five inch screen. I'll go through the specs in a second. But as you can see, first impressions, very nice looking handset. In the box, a very credible user manual. Again, these things are getting better every iteration that we see from the uh, Chinese manufacturers, brand manufacturers. Spare battery, so you have two batteries, two uh, 1,800 milliamp hour batteries. Headphone socket, micro USB, and the charge block for your country. The, everything you need basically to get going and start using the phone. Let's have a look at the phone itself. So if I just run through a couple of the, a few bit of the specs, it's running Android 4.2.1, and it has a the MTK 6589T. The T is important. That reflects um, the uh, fact that it's the latest of the MediaTek processor uh, chips which means that it runs at 1.5 gigahertz rather than the traditional 1.2 that you'll find on the other ones and has some other features in the whole chipset. RAM, one gigabyte of RAM, um, 3G and 2G, as you'd expect, uh, Wi-Fi, 802.1 up to N, GPS, Bluetooth. You won't find the exotic, exotic Bluetooth um, on here. It's just plain vanilla Bluetooth. It will support 3G tethering, Comes with an 8 megapixel rear camera, and this is genuinely, from what I can see, an 8 megapixel camera. And surprisingly, a 5 megapixel front facing camera, which again seems to be quite a good resolution. Battery size, as, as I said before, 1800 milliamp hour, 1280 by 720 screen, 5 point capacitive touch screen, which is standard by now. It comes with eight gigabytes of internal storage and a micro SD support up to 32 gigabytes. I'm not sure why these media techs are not supporting 64 gigabyte, but there seems to be some sort of issue with the, the higher speeds of the, uh, of the latest micro SD cards. 3.5 millimeter headphone socket, as you can see at the top, micro USB, volume up and down, power on. And that's it. Very elegant. There's not oh, and the speaker on the back, of course. Right there. Now, the, the other difference with this chipset from MediaTek is it comes with more sensors. It seems every iteration of, of phone that we get adds another sensor to the list. So this one has a proximity sensor, as you'd expect for turning off the screen, etc. Accelerometer, again, light gravity sensor and a magnetic field sensor so it's it's up the ante on those kind of exotic sensors um, so your apps can do more things dimensions 143 by 75 by 9 mil so it is a very sleek handset as you can probably tell there i'll compare it in a second with, with the other and a weight of 134 grams which is slightly higher than the w100 but you'd expect that with a larger screen we just take a look at uh, Head to head comparison with the W100. Let's just get that screen on. You can see that the screen real estate is definitely improved on the W200, um, and the resolution, although it's hard to see through the camera, is definitely better at 1280. The, the W100 is, I think, it was 800 or something like that. Um, compare it with. 
the good old Galaxy Note, the original phablet, which is a 5.3 screen. And you'll see that the, the form factor is surprisingly smaller with the new THL. Um, the phablet is definitely a, a larger beast all round. Of course, it's used for a different purpose with the stylus and, and things. I still love that concept of being able to use it as a real tablet and write on it with the stylus and stuff, which you can't do on the on the T uh, on the W two hundred, but still you can see the difference in size. It's much more the W two hundred is much more pocket friendly, if that's a word or if that's a phrase. There you go. Right, so let's live with it for a second, shall we? Let's have a look at the rear. It comes with the, the typical slim, sort of lightweight back, so beloved by Samsung, and which seems to be a, a standard now because of the weight savings and, and things like that. This uh, 1800 milliamp hour battery is big, you know, capacious as they say. Twin SIMs. Micro SD in the middle, the eight megapixel camera up there with the flash on there, on the side there, and the speaker at the bottom. We think it's the build quality is as good as anything we've seen, um, and the as you'll see in a second, the performance is also extremely good with the quad core processor um, at that higher. It's surprising how how much of an improvement the latest T chip um, brings to the table. So let's demonstrate that. Let's have a look at, say, where browsing, obviously I've, I've cached this deliberately, but let's go into a place I haven't cached. And this is now running on Wi-Fi, clearly. But as you can see, browsing is beautifully swift as you'd hope for with this kind of processing power this is a, a great a great phone i'm starting to fall in love with with these thl handsets because of the build quality and also because of the fact that i love twin sim oh i was running a the w100 over a, a, a weekend break running the twin sim one for data and using it for anybody else to tether around in the, in the house and using the other one for just standard calls and browsing. And it was great. Twin sims really do improve the experience and especially when they're twin sim uh, tw dual standby. So you don't have to worry about swapping from one to the other. They just are automatically always on, as you can probably see at the top there, they're both, both live both sims. Let's try looking at a game. Again, the improved quad core 1.5 gigahertz really does make games a very fluid and playable experience. Not to say, I mean, the difference is quite significant when you look at the uh, loading times and downloading times, it's those sort of areas where you start to notice the improved chipset. So while, once you're in the game, while you won't, probably won't notice much difference, um, especially since they've both got the one gig, it's when you, you're trying to get in and out of the game and trying to boot and to start, that things start to improve with the, with the uh, better processor. So, speakers, nothing huge to shout about, but to be honest, if you're going to do serious music and serious gaming, you'll probably want to use some kind of headset anyway. This is really just for the emergency, emergency speakers in the airport or whatever. I'm not sure, you, I assume you can see the quality of the screen.
This is the Real Racing 3, in case you're wondering. As you can see, <laughs> it's really a <laughs> handling the graphics with no problem whatsoever. So yes, it games perfectly. The other great thing that I have to comment on is the GPS. They've sorted out the GPS issues. Apparently this is a, a generic issue with M uh, MediaTek GPS chipsets that they have a, uh, a significant problem locking on, first time to lock on the satellites, which means you can take a long time to lock your navigation when you're trying to get, get going. It's really quite an annoying and on the W100 I was trying to find all sorts of fixes and tweaks to improve it and I did manage to improve it a little bit I think but still it was still a frustration. The new MediaTek chipset, this T, or, uh, and on this phone especially, I, I, I can't talk for all of them of course, but on this phone that problem has gone away. The first time to lock on, on the navigation is fast. What I'd expect to find from a uh, Samsung or any of the major brand names. It's a few min a couple of minutes to lock on, if not less. So that improves the whole navigation experience significantly. Um, and as you can see, the rest of the, the experience with regarding the maps and the tiling, of course, obviously I'm paging in from Wi-Fi here, um, but it's still, again, perfectly usable and uh, impressive, in fact. Uh, especially with the new Google Maps, which I quite like, actually. I like the new interface and the integration between navigation and the uh, the maps, much better than it used to be. So I can't prove that here because I'm indoors and I'm away from the sky. But what I'll do is I'll try and see if I can grab a quick shot of it syncing with the satellite on the way out when I do some photo shots later. So the final thing to just have a quick look at is, is really the camera. Um, uh, that's really down to sample shots. Again, I believe this is a significant improvement over the original W100. The shots from the camera actually do seem to genuinely reflect 8 megapixels. Previously, I felt that, that the, the camera produced shots which were in, in decent light, which were okay, but if you actually zoomed you would see quite a bit of softness um, and noise in the shots. There's still noise and it's still soft, but it's improved. They've definitely taken steps to improve the, the quality of the results from this, this camera. And it's fast. That's multiple shots. Um, the video I love, I think the video on these, um, these MediaTek handsets is great it's as good as anything i've seen on any other handset uh, again i'll show i'll put samples up to show exactly uh, what i mean by that and of course having a 1280 by 720 screen resolution screen means you could see things much better than than before through the viewfinder function i i'm not too sure about some of these these um, options here the settings like hdr i i'm not really sure that improves things that much better over a standard shot but your mileage might may va vary on that so there you go that's a, a a quick look at the at the thl w200 a nice phone a really nice phone i love the twin sim i'm becoming more and more of a of a devotee um I, this i use these twin sim phones as my main phones now i don't use the single sim branded ones there you go i hope you enjoyed it as usual if you enjoyed this please remember to subscribe and favorite and share and all that kind of cool stuff so we can do more thanks a lot bye okay i'm not sure whether you can see this but let's just try to get a first lock on the google maps from start so it's just firing up Again, the, one of the big problems is when it comes out of the box, the A, um, GPS and the EPO, what it was called, the high speed lock on, it doesn't work properly, so you have to actually activate that to make it work.
there you go, we're locked. That's about as fast as I've, uh, you can traditionally get from most uh, GPS satellite systems. That to me is a win, they've fixed the problem. Yay!